Spending hours on social media was something many teens did to stay connected during the pandemic. But did countless images of models and influencers filling some feeds contribute to a new surge in eating disorders? Ginger Z has the second installment of our mental health series, State of Mind. I just realized that there's so much to live for in life. I've thought to myself so many times that I'm not gonna sit on my deathbed wishing that I looked skinnier as a 20-year-old. <laughs> for 20-year-old Lucy Saya, anything related to food used to fill her with dread. I see a picture of myself online or in the mirror that I don't like. I panic and the way that I knew to take care of that was through food or through exercise. But now, prepping dinner at her family's home in Dallas, it's a sign that she's come a long way. You can find an article or something online that is saying every single food is bad. Carbs are bad, sugars are bad. I was just starting to cut them out until I had very minimal food groups left in my diet. For years, Lucy suffered from a severe eating disorder, a health crisis that forced her to take a year off of college and threatened to tear her family apart. I got it. My relationship with my parents and my family definitely took a turn throughout my disorder. You know, they were trying to save my life and I was trying to do the opposite. We tried to coax her into eating and, mm -hmm. and there was no coaxing that was working. She started running a lot and then pretty quickly we, we got the feeling that something was off. How do you describe it? I was depressed, I was anxious, I didn't want to get out of bed, I didn't want to continue to live anymore. The way that I dealt with that was and tried to make myself feel better was by manipulating the way that I consumed food. Exercise was definitely a big part of my um, initial struggle. So I was running outside every chance that I get or hiding from my family and doing workouts in my room. Lucy's battle with anorexia started during the COVID-19 lockdown when she says she had too much time on her hands. What do you think your social media usage went f through in the pandemic? I would say like I was on my phone anywhere from five to six hours a day, mm -hmm. like scrolling through Instagram, looking on Snapchat, watching TikToks was a huge thing and definitely a big trigger for my anorexia. A lot of people have pages where they post what I eat in a day videos or diet culture related things. While social media may have had positive effects for some during COVID lockdown, for Lucy, seemingly perfect influencers and models overtaking her feed became toxic. We know in the pandemic, social isolation increased significantly. We know that kids are spending an average of seven hours on their phone every single day getting, you know, these harmful images thrown at them from algorithms. Lucy is part of a sometimes hidden mental health epidemic that does not discriminate and manifests in people of all sizes. There's a lot of stigma around this being a white rich girl vanity issue, which could not be further from the truth. The majority of people with eating disorders are not underweight. You can't tell just by looking at them. These illnesses are highly comorbid with anxiety, with depression, with PTSD, with OCD. According to the National Eating Disorders Association, nearly 30 million Americans will have an eating disorder in their lifetime. A third of the cases, that's 10 million, are men. The pandemic made the crisis worse. The White House just last year acknowledging national eating disorder hotlines have seen a more than 70% spike in calls for help just days ago. The American Psychological Association put out a warning for parents of kids aged 10 to 14 to monitor their social media and recommend that adolescents limit their viewing of, quote, beauty or appearance-related content that researchers suggest is linked to disordered eating. I think there are a lot of non-conscious thoughts that folks don't even realize how much this is impacting them when they're mindlessly scrolling. I'm not good enough. I don't look like that. Therefore, something must be wrong with me. In 2021, members of Congress also sounding the alarm, grilling executives of Instagram and Facebook about how their platforms may harm kids' mental health. Facebook knows the destructive consequences that Instagram's design and algorithms are having on our young people and our society. At Facebook, we take the privacy, safety, and well-being of all those who use our platform very seriously, especially the youngest people on our services. On what has come. There was no TikTok or Instagram when I fought my own battle with anorexia more than 25 years ago. I was confused. I was scared. I felt chaotic. I felt like I had no control over my life. And so controlling food, was the first place I went to. 
I started restricting food at age 10. You cannot stop yourself from going to the extremes on all of these and it keeps getting worse and I just kept consuming less and thinking that was better and better. Even without swipes and likes, my anorexia was persistent, painful, and dangerous for nearly a decade. Emily Batnagar's battle with eating disorders also goes back to elementary school. I remember like the day before my fifth grade promotion ceremony, I was like looking at myself in the mirror and I was like dangerously underweight then and I was like, no, I need to exercise. And I think it just like went along with that thought that like food is gross and not like necessary for survival. Her health going from bad to worse after her dad was diagnosed with stage four thyroid cancer four years ago. I would have a cup of fruit and maybe some water and um, anything else would make me feel so nauseous. And so it really started to spiral into something bigger and it was anorexia. I would notice like physical symptoms like I would get up and immediately get dizzy or my fingernails would turn blue. It makes your hair fall out. Today, Emily's health is a work in progress, but she's finding purpose in her passion, collecting books for charity. I just sort of used it as an outlet. I was like, okay, I need to focus my energy into something else. I think the book drive actually like helped me more than anything else. Up to now, I have donated 15,000 books to children hospitals and yeah, it's become like my own little business <laughs> and I love it so much. Although young women are more commonly diagnosed with eating disorders, LGBTQ plus teens are at an even higher risk than their peers. Hello, my name is Elliot Schneider. I identify as a queer non-binary person. Schneider, a 15-year-old from Austin, Texas, is now speaking out to make sure the trans community is included in the conversation. As my eating disorder developed, I began throwing up after meals as a way to try to control my weight because eating disorder is a lot about control. Part of it was just my entire feed consisted of just really skinny people who were beautiful and I would think, why can't I look like them? Like, will people ever find me attractive if I don't look like them? Today, Elliot's message is a simple one. Skinny does not equal pretty and everyone's body is beautiful. Tell me about the day that you said, Lucy, we need to make a change here. Yeah, it was it was an emotional day. You know, we had been talking to a, a lot of a lot of professionals about what was the best next step, and we finally decided she needed to go to a higher level of care. Lucy has spent time in seven different treatment programs, and she found real help through a team of specialists. A lot of people don't have the privilege of getting this kind of help. And eating disorders are pervasive through every socioeconomic, every race, every everything. Yeah, I want to be able to give back to those who haven't had the treatment opportunities that I have. If you live in a more rural community, if you are a member of a marginalized group, if you are low income, recovery and finding access to treatment is going to be a tremendous amount harder. There are some states with literally no eating disorder providers. Lucy is entering a new chapter, one that she says includes a lot of therapy and regular visits with her dietitian. How are you feeling today? Um, I'm okay. I had a pretty good week. She's also ditching her old ways on social media. I think it's really important for those that are struggling to filter their social media pages in a way that's comfortable for them. Do you limit your social media by like putting a cap on it on your phone now? I had to re-go through and click like not interested and um, like unlike a lot of the videos that were diet culture food related and now I no longer see them on my For You page. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.